hey y'all it's Belle welcome back to my channel today I'm gonna do an eBay book haul I got the Robin Hoodlum adventure trilogy by Kekla Magoon and the first book is Shadows of Sherwood Rebellion of Thieves Reign of Outlaws Robin Loxley must fend for herself the night her parents disappear and her home, not city, is taken over by the harsh governor at Eomas Crown. After fleeing for her life, Robin has no choice but to join a band of strangers, misfit kids, each with a unique talent for avoiding trouble. Setting out to right the wrongs of Crown's merciless government, they take pride in their outlaw status. But Robin can't rest until she finds her parents, and as she pieces together clues, Robin learns that her destiny is tied to the future of Knot City in ways she never expected. Very intrigued by these. And... They just sound incredible. We got the Maloney's Magical Weather Box by Nigel Quinlan. Another cover. Neil and Liz Maloney have a secret. Their father is a keeper of the weather box, a magical phone booth that rings four times a year, signaling the changing of the seasons. But one day when the family gathers to send off the summer, the phone doesn't ring and autumn doesn't arrive. Instead, a mysterious tourist of magic shows up at their doorstep, along with two nonsensical hags and one cat-shaped bog beast. The only one not taken by surprise is her neighbor, Mrs. Fitzgerald, who seems to be able to make the elements of weather itself do her bidding. Now it's up to Neil and Liz to discover the source of Mrs. Fitzgerald's power before all weather breaks loose. Such an intriguing synopsis. This is one I've wanted for so long. So happy to finally have it. Actually, a lot of these are. Strange Birds, A Field Guide to Ruffling Feathers by Celia C. Perez. How do strangers become friends? Ophelia Castillo is searching for a story. While her friends leave their boring Florida town for summer camps and family vacations, she braces for zero excitement. Lane DeSanti would like her whole family to kick rocks, especially her parents who sent her to live with her grandmother for the summer while they finalize their divorce. Astor Douglas has one summer to figure out how to be a kid. She's been homeschooled by her grandfather her whole life and it's easier for her to make a souffle than a friend. Kat Garcia is hiding a big secret. She's in need of a new troop after she quits the Flores, her local scouts, without her mother knowing. When the fate and longing bring the girls together, it isn't love at first sight, but they soon bond over a shared mission to get the Flores to ditch an outdated tradition. In their quest for justice, independence, and an unforgettable summer, the girls form their own troop and find something they didn't know they needed, sisterhood. That sounds like an incredible story. That sounds so heartwarming. Like a perfect summer read, too. And I got their first four books. I think the series is the Tunnels series. There's a couple more books I still need to get, but I got the first four by Roderick Gordon and Brian Williams. Deeper. Freefall. Closer. Where the end is just the beginning. 14-year-old Will Burroughs has little in common with his family, but he does share one bond with his odd father. An obsession with archaeological digs. When the two discovered an abandoned tunnel buried beneath modern-day London, they think they're on the brink of a major find. Then Dad vanishes. With the help of his best friend Chester, Will decides to investigate the truth behind his father's disappearance. Soon they're lost in a dark underworld, and the deeper they descend, the deadlier the threat to their lives. These have always intrigued me, so I'm not excited to have at least the first four. Then I got Unstoppable Octobia May by Sharon C. Flake. Octavia May is, is whip smart, quick witted and very curious. She's not shy about telling people what she thinks and she loves to ask, ask, ask all kinds of questions, even if they lead her where others dare not go, into the graveyard or up the long troubled path that runs beside Bend River. Lots of times Octavia May's questions aren't the ones folks want to answer, but that doesn't stop this girl who will not let her curiosity rest until she finds out what's true and what's not. Some see her as an odd child. Then there are those who think she's too nosy, outspoken and pushy for a girl her age. After all, it's 1953, and any adult will tell you that children should be seen and not heard. Thank goodness for Auntie, who's allowed Octavia May to come live in her boarding house, a place filled with old folks, rumors, and mysteries. Auntie has a strong backbone herself. She understands what it's like to speak your mind and to probe when things seem not quite right. When Octavia May starts to look past the pretty curtains and guest room doors of her aunt's house, trouble, excitement, and wonder begin. Octavia May is convinced there's a vampire living in room 204. <laughs> this sounds incredible. Very excited. I wanted this one for so long, too. Like I said, all these. The Summer We Found the Baby by Amy Hest. It's early morning when 11-year-old Julie Sweet 
and her six-year-old sister Martha find the baby on the steps of the new children's library in Bell Beach, Long Island. At the same time, 12-year-old Bruno Ben Eli, Eli is on his way to catch the 915 train into New York City. He is on an important errand for his brother, who is serving in World War II. But when Bruno sees Julie, who hasn't spoken to him for 16 days, carrying a baby in a basket, he has to follow her. Holy everything, he thinks. Julie Sweet is a kidnapper. But the children soon discover that the truth about the baby is more complicated than they imagine. Told in three voices, each with a different take on events, this beautifully textured novel by award-winning author Amy Hess captures the emotions and moments of one life-changing summer. Very intrigued. <laughs> And then in another book haul I mentioned, I got books one and three of the Crispin series by Avi. Avi, I don't know how to say his name. And this is book two that I got on eBay, uh, At the Edge of the World. And I read the synopsis in that haul, so I won't read this one since it is book two. So excited to get that. And then other World Chronicles series by Nils, Niles Johnson Shelton. I had had book two, probably two years now. <laughs> so I finally got book ones and three. Book one is The Invisible Tower. And book two is Seven Swords, I think it's called. And then book three is The Dragon King. Part of the spell has already been broken. The first stones have begun to crumble. In already Kingfisher's world, wizards named Merlin, fire-breathing dragons, and swords called Excalibur exist only in legends and lore, until the day his video game Other Worlds springs to life. You are special, Arthur, says the mysterious message in his game. In one week's time, you will come to meet me at the It. Cryptic clues lead Artie to a strange place called the Invisible Tower, where he discovers that nothing in his life is as it seems. Artie is none other than King Arthur, brought to life in the 21st century. Artie has won the battle in the virtual other world. Now the key to saving the real other world lies in his hands as well. Green dragons, hungry wolves, powerful sorcerers. Suddenly Artie must battle them as he wields Excalibur and embarks on a quest worthy of the Knights of the Round Table. With his sister Kay by his side, Artie steps into the other world, straight toward his destiny. Love retellings. So excited to finally have the whole series. This is The Unfortunate Son by Constance Leeds. Lucky? What does it mean? Luck wouldn't know. Born with only one ear, smaller and weaker than his younger brother, he's anything but fortunate, and his mean-spirited father can't stand the sight of him. Luck se Luck's luck seems to improve when he is apprenticed to Pons, a kind and gentle fisherman, and he meets the beautiful Beatrice. But a sudden act of villainy lands Luke in North Africa, where he finds himself the property of a wealthy and powerful uncle. With no money for ransom and no hope of escape, Luck fears he will never see his native France again. This may seem like the end for Luke, but really it's just the beginning. Excited. Sounds like a grand adventure. And I got Grave Images by Jenny Goebel. Twelve-year-old Bernie Summer is looking pretty grim. It's hard to make friends when your family runs a monument company and your backyard is littered with tombstones. The only kid who isn't freaked out by Bernie's house is Michael Romano, but he doesn't count. The last thing Bernie needs is to befriend a pogo stick riding new boy, the one person in Stratwood even stranger than her. But then her father hires a drifter to carve the headstones, the mysterious Mr. Stein. Bernie has a bad feeling about him right from the start, and after poking around his cottage, he finds an engraved portrait of their neighbor, a man who promptly dies the next day. When the death con deaths continue, Bernie is forced to confide in Michael, and their snooping reveals something creepier than anything Bernie's classmates could have imagined. The reclusive artist has been engraving the headstones before people die, forcing Bernie and Michael to ask a horrifying question. Is Mr. Stein predicting the deaths or causing them? Cannot wait. Emily and the Spellstone by Michael Rubens. Another one I have wanted for sure. All Emily wants for her 12th birthday is a cell phone. She doesn't get one. Another reason why this day at the beach is her worst birthday ever. Coincidentally, perhaps, Emily finds an odd-looking stone, kind of rectangular with a screen-like area displaying colorful images that move, as well as a weird demand. Free me. Turns out that Emily is now the bewildered owner of a spell stone. What the heck is a spell stone? You and Emily are about to find out. So, I love that synopsis, so cannot wait. This is one that I thought I had for the longest time, and had even posted on Instagram and stuff, but I didn't. <laughs> the Princess and the Page, Christina Farley. This one that I've wanted to read for so long, for sure. A dark secret lurks in Kira's family. She comes from a long line of word weavers who bring their stories to life when they use a magical pen. But for generations, word weavers have been hunted for their power. That's why Kira is forbidden to write. When Kira discovers her grandmother's word weaver pen and writes a story for the Girls' World Fairy Tale Contest, she starts to wonder if ever, anyone ever truly lives happily ever after. Inspired by the life and times of Gabrielle de Estres, French royalty who lived during the 1500s, the princess of the page follows the mystical journey of a modern day royal who goes from having a pen in her hand to wishing for the world at her fingertips. So intrigued by that. It sounds fascinating. 
I love inspired by real life times and people, so. And I'll be doing some Googling about that person. And then City of Islands by Kelly Wallace. In a foggy archipelago called the City of Islands, magic drifts on the air as songs. 12 year old Mara has always been fascinated by the spell songs and dreams of becoming a great mage. Orphaned as a little girl, Mara was taken by a bone mage called Bindi. But when Bindi was killed by a rival, Mara lost both her home and her best chance to learn magic. Now Mara is a servant for the powerful Lady of the Tides. She earns her keep by diving in the murky ocean, searching for magical treasures that might please the lady. Then one day, Mira makes a startling discovery, a pile of skeletons on the ocean floor. But these aren't just any skeletons. They seem to belong to strange hybrid creatures like a lizard with wings, a horse with horns, and many more. The entire trove of bones is humming with a powerful spell song. Mira is convinced that her discovery will earn her the opportunity to study magic, but rather than rewarding her, the lady gives Mira a challenge to learn where the magical bones came from by sneaking into the Winterblade, an island fortress ruled by the very same sorcerer who killed Bindi years ago. What Mara finds will reveal chilling truths about her own past, as well as secrets about the history of her beloved city that are more dangerous than she had ever imagined. That sounds so good. I'm so excited. This duology is one that I literally have been wanting forever. So, first book is A Tangle of Knots, and they're by Lisa Graff. A Clatter of Jars. In a remarkable world where many people are blessed with a special talent, 11-year-old Caddy, Katie, is an orphan with a phenomenal ability for cake baking and no idea of the journey that fate set in place for her the moment she was born. But when Katie moves into an upstairs room in the town's lost luggage emporium, she meets a curious cast of characters who live, who, whose lives are tangled with her own in ways she never could have imagined. There's a ragtag group <laughs> of siblings struggling to grow beyond their talents, the woman without any words, and the devious thief on a single-minded mission. And the one thing that ties them all together just might lie inside a single powder blue suitcase. In a story that falls into place like a magnificent puzzle, these encounters hold the key to unraveling the mystery of Katie's past. So a ragtag rag group, which I love. Mystery, food, incredible. I got Chirp by Kate Messner. Sometimes courage starts out quiet. When Mia moves to Vermont that summer after seventh grade, she's ready for the change in scenery. Her arm still aches from when she broke it falling off the balance beam, and her heart still aches from a secret she'd rather forget. For now, there's plenty to keep Mia busy day camp, new friends, and time with her beloved grandmother. But Graham is convinced someone is trying to destroy her cricket farm. Could it be sabotage, or is Graham's thinking impaired from the stroke she suffered months ago? Me and her friends set out to investigate, but can they uncover the truth in time to save Graham's farm? And will that discovery empower Mia to confront the secret she's been hiding and find courage she never knew she had? Oh, sounds like a great mystery, heartwarming, but some important messages. Excited. Blue Window by Adina Rich Gortz. Five siblings, the oldest of whom are 13-year-old fraternal twins, find themselves in a dizzying new world after falling through a mysterious cobalt window one December evening. Can it be real or is it some kind of group hallucination? In this new world, it's now summertime, meh, and the acres and acres of dense forest nearby bear no resemblance to the suburban neighborhood they've left behind. But most startling of all are the unusual, almost feral people they encounter. However, the sibling shock is nothing compared to what the local inhabitants seem to think of them. Soon enough, the dangers of this new and hostile society prove all too real, and the five search for a way home becomes urgent. For in Ganbahar, the genius and ego-mad demagogue controls the land through illusion and force, using citizens and even the very young as means to his ambitious ends. Lies are indistinguishable from truths, and not even the so-called sanctuary the children discover turns out to be truly safe. Each of them in her or his own way must learn to dive deep within to awaken unforeseen personal powers, and ultimately, they all can rely only upon one another to fulfill their prophesied destiny and confront the evils that surround them. She's very intrigued by that. So, she's very interested in that synopsis and excited to have that. And I got Cookie Cutters and Sled Runners by Natalie Rompella. For years, Anna and Lily have been looking forward to writing and selling their own cookbook for their middle school project. So when her teacher assigns her to a different partner, Anna is devastated. What could have been their big break as bakers has turned into a huge, maybe even friendship-ending disaster. Worse, Anna's partner, the new girl from Alaska, wants to do their project on sled dog racing in the Midwest. There's no way Anna, Anna can tell Dasher about her obsessive compulsive disorder, or why even watching, watching Dasher work with drooly, germy dogs makes Anna want to wash her hands. Then Dasher sprains her ankle, and the only way to avoid getting an F on their project is for Anna to take her spot in the race. Can Anna learn to mush and overcome her anxiety in time to save her friendships, finish her project, and com 
compete in a sled dog race. That sounds incredible. So excited for that. Uh, Storm of Strawberries by Joe Cotterill. I love strawberries anything. Strawberry flavored anything. I hate cherries. Strawberries are worth that. So that, the cover, and the synopsis. <sighs> Winning. Darby is 12 years old and has Down syndrome. Her favorite things are music, chocolate, and her big sister, Katie. It's a big weekend for Darby. The family's annual chocolate hunt is here, and it's all she can think about. Well, that and the spending time with her big sister. But Katie's friend, Lisa, is staying over for the weekend, and she seems to be stealing all of Katie's attention. And to make things worse, their strawberry farm is struck by a tornado. Suddenly, it's as though both the chocolate hunt and her sister are slipping away from her. Although the family is equipped for the brutal weather, they aren't prepared for the storm of emotions that surface when a hidden truth amid the turmoil, turmoil is brought to light. With tensions rising within her family, can Darby mend what's been broken even when it seems like no one is listening to her? Sounds like a great story. Heartwarming, important topics, and possibly great representation with the main character having Down syndrome. We'll have to see, but it sounds incredible. Another one I have wanted forever. 14 Hollow Road by Jen Bishop. The cover. The night of the sixth grade dance is supposed to be perfect for Maddie. She'll wear her beautiful new dress, she'll hit the dance floor with her friends, and her crush, Avery, will ask her to dance. Most importantly, she'll finally leave her tiny elementary school behind for junior high. But as the first slow song starts to play, her plans crumble. Avery asks someone else to dance instead, and then the power goes out. Huddled in the gym, Maddie and her friends are stunned to hear that a tornado has ripped through the other side of town, destroying both Maddie's and Avery's home. Another tornado story. Kind neighbors open up their home to Maddie's and Avery's families, which both excites and horrifies Maddie. Sharing the same house with Avery for the entire summer, while it buys her some time to prove that Avery made the wrong choice at the dance, it also means he'll be there to witness her morning breath and her annoying little brother. Meanwhile, she must search for her beloved dog, who went missing during the tornado. At the dance, all she wanted was to be more grown up. Now that she has no choice, is she really ready for it? I'll figure out the dog's name. Like I said, I'll have to go to the back of the book and scan for his name because if something bad happens I won't be able to read it but it's middle grade so he should be fine but very excited that sounds like a unique story I can't even imagine being that age and living with yeah I know and then two books that are first in a series and then first in a duology but the other books are either impossible to find or too expensive first one is A Witch's Kitchen I'm not sure the name of the series and they're by Diane Diana Sanchez I think there's two more books, but like I can't find them. Like they're out of print and I can't find them used anywhere. But they sound incredible, so I at least wanted to get this one while I could. Witches and food. <laughs> Millie's a witch, so why can't she do magic? Despite her mother's best efforts to teach her, every spill Millie tries goes horribly wrong. But she's a fabulous cook. And when Millie conjures chocolate sauce instead of a transformation potion, her mother gives up and sends her to the Enchanted Forest School. Millie's initial delight in attending school rapidly fades as she struggles in the unfamiliar social environment, encountering fellow students of magical races, making new friends, and discovering that her mother's style of magic isn't the only one available. Excited to at least have the first one for now. I will get the others if I can find them. And this one has a second book, but it's like $40 or so. So whenever I do find it for a reasonable price, I will pick that one up. I think the series name is The Witches of Farlow High, and this one's The New Girl. It's by Ariana Chambers. It's not easy being the new girl, especially in a town full of witches. When Nessa has to move to the sleepy town of Fair, ha Fair Hollow to live with her aunt, she has never felt so lonely. She misses her friends, and to make things worse, the mean girls have singled her out. Then she meets cool, book-loving Holly, and soon Fair Hollow High doesn't seem so bad. But Holly has a secret, one Nessa could never have conjured in her wildest dreams. They sound right at my alley in witches, school, and yeah. And I'll just touch on this briefly. I think I mentioned one book in an Amazon haul. So... I got the other three books off of eBay, and it's the Notebooks of a Middle School Princess by Meg Cabot series. And then Royal Wedding Disaster. I can't remember which number it was I had in the other one. It's the last book, The Royal Crush. Let's see. Return to Genovia in a new series of illustrated diaries from a creative middle school princess. So I think it's and returning to uh, land from one of her other series, but I think the other series was more why well, I don't remember, but it's its own series. Olivia Grace Clarice Mignode Harrison is a completely average 12 year old. The only things about her that aren't average are her name, her ability to draw animals, and the fact that she is half orphan who's never met her father. 
Then one day, everything goes wrong. The most popular girl in school threatens to beat her up. The principal gives her a demerit, and she's knocked down at the bus stop. Suddenly, Princess Mia Thermopolis of Genu Genovia pulls up in a limo and invites Livia to finally meet her father, who promptly suggests she come live, live with him, Mia, Grand Demer, and their two fabulous pupils. Maybe Olivia Grace, Clarice Magnode Harrison isn't so average after all. Fantastic sounding. So excited to have all of them. We have Fortune Falls by Jenny Gobble again. I have to show it another of her books a second ago. Welcome to Fortune Falls, a magical town where superstitions are real. Four leaf clovers really do bring good fortune, and a rabbit's foot is the secret to success. However, there aren't enough charms in the universe to help Sadie Bleeker. That's because Sadie isn't unlucky. Things will only get worse as she gets older, which is why unluckies are sent away at age 12 to protect those around them. But Sadie can't stand the thought of leaving home, so with her 12th birthday fast approaching, she and her best friend, Cooper, devise a plan to reverse her bad luck. But when their scheme accidentally results in a broken mirror, the situation turns dire. Her dog goes missing in a graveyard, and that's just the beginning of her problem. Because for Sadie, seven years bad luck isn't an inconvenience, it's practically a death sentence. Can a girl who's never found a lucky penny change her fortune? Or will she be forced to celebrate her 12th birthday by saying farewell, farewell to everyone she loves? Being called an unlucky and then age 12 kind of makes me think of Nevermore, except they get sent away, not killed like Nevermore. But. And speaking of, I didn't mention this in my favorite series videos. I've only read the first two. I haven't read the third book yet because I didn't see the point because it takes so long for each next book to come out. So like it'll be like two years, but I just can't. <laughs> I'll just wait. <laughs> And I do love it. It's a great series. I don't, like, I really love it. Like, it's it's, it's a favorite, but it's not an all-time favorite. Like, I absolutely adore it, and I love it, and I love the characters and the story, but I don't understand all the hype that it gets. I don't know how to say it without it sounding bad. It is a favorite, but as, I guess it just depends on your taste, like I always say, but it's not an all-time favorite for me. Like, but I do love it a lot. But this sounds incredible, and I'm very interested to see how this story goes. Oh, I just found another book. I think I had all the series together. I think, going back to this series, this was the one I'd gotten in the haul. I just found the other book. This was Royal Crown. This is the other one I got from eBay. So these three I got from eBay. But this is what the series. I wanted to point that out. And then also, in the Amazon sale, I got the other book in the Goblin series by Bruce Cavell. So I got the second book from eBay. This is Goblins on the Prowl. Since it is the second book, I'm not gonna read a synopsis. I read it in the other video. I'm excited to have that duology complete. And then I've read three books by Deva Fagan now, and I've loved all of them. So I got the other three books she has out. <laughs> First is Fortune's Folly. Then Circus Galacticus. And the Magical Misadventures of Prunella. Fog Thistle. Well, that's a title. Ever since her mother died and her father lost his shoemaking skills, Fortuna has survived by telling fake fortunes. But when she's tricked into telling a grand fortune for a prince, she is faced with the impossible task of fulfilling her wild prophecy or her father will be put to death. Now Fortunata has to help Prince Leonardo secure a magical sword, vanquish a wicked witch, discover a long lost golden shoe, and rescue the princess who fits it. If only she herself hadn't fallen in love with the prince. This is listed in middle grade, but falling in love, I'm gonna have to dig deeper into this one, but it says middle grade. And the synopsis for this one. Trix can deal with being an orphan charity case at a snotty boarding school. She can hold her own when everyone else tells her not to dream big dreams. She can even fight back against a mysterious stranger in a silver mask who tries to steal the meteorite her parents trusted her to protect. But her life is about to change forever. The Circus Galactus has come to town, bringing acts to amaze, delight, and terrify. And now the dazzling, enigmatic young ringmaster has offered Trix a chance to be part of it. Soon Trix discovers an entire new universe full of deadly enemies and potential friends, not to mention space leeches, ancient alien artifacts, and exploding chocolate desserts. And as she just might unravel the secrets of her own past if she can survive long enough. And the synopsis for this one. The only thing Prunella wants is to be a proper bog witch. Unfortunately, her curses tend to do more good than harm, and she hasn't got a single stinking wart. When her mixed-up magic allows a sneaky thief to escape from her grandmother's garden, Prunella is cast out until she can prove herself. It's hard enough being ex exiled to the decidedly unmagical uplands, but traveling with a smug young thief Barnaby is even worse. He's determined to gain fame and fortune by recovering the missing Mirabel Chalice. And to get what she wants, Prunella must help him. But what if the aspiring villain and the would-be hero are on the right quest for the wrong reason? So all of those just sound very 
interesting. I'm very excited to get to those. Catherine Langrish's The Shadow Hunt. Wolf is on the run from the oppressive monastery where he was raised, from the ghosts and demons that haunt the windswept moors of Devil's Edge, and from the shadows in the landscape that resemble the devil himself. When Wolf rescues a strange child on Devil's Edge, he takes her to a grand castle hoping to win the favor of his ruler. Then he strikes up an unlikely friendship with a girl named Nest, and he thinks he's finally found a place to call home. Wolf is determined to fit in, but not everything is as it seems at the castle. Dark forces are conspiring against Wolf and Nest, and a sinister enemy is looming closer than they ever, they could ever realize. With, with lies masquerading as reality, will Wolf and Nest learn who they can trust before it's too late? That sounds so good. Very excited to have that. We have Teenage Treasure Hunter by Daniel Kinney. Six months after his mom's death, a still broken-hearted Curiel Diggs discovers that his mom has left him a challenge. She wants him to find the Romanov Dolls, a fantastic treasure stolen from the Manhattan Art Collective when she was only a child. Despite having an overbearing, famous father who has already mapped out his son's future, Curiel follows his heart and his mother's clues to St. Petersburg, Russia, where he teams up with the granddaughter of a Russian history professor to unravel the mystery behind the priceless treasure. Very excited. And lastly, The Moor Child by Eloise McGraw. And this is the edition that I wanted. There's another edition I really love, the cover, but I like this one the best. Rage and Grieve. That's all Mako can do against her terrible fate. Her own kin have banished her from all she's ever known. Her homeland, the folk, the moors, and sent her to live with humans. The man with his feral, threatening iron, the woman who smothers her with embraces, Michael couldn't care less about them. All she wants is to go back home. But Michael, called Saski by the man and woman, will have to care. For though she isn't human, she isn't folk either. She's half of both, making her not quite one nor the other. And the folk have already rejected her once. Even if she could go back, they would surely do it again. Saski must fit in to, with these people to survive, and this may be more difficult than she thinks, because humans don't just banish others who are different from them. They fear them, and a fearful human can be very dangerous. And this is a Newberry Honor book, so that sounds very interesting. Very excited. And that's it for us all for now. I have more books from eBay coming, but this was already kind of long, as you can see, so I wanted to go ahead and do part one of this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, do any of these sound good to you? Have you read any of them? Let me know in the comments. And if you would like to subscribe, I would love that. If you would like to. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.